sucks and rock okay are two very common induction agents for paralysis okay we use them as neuromuscular blockers to assist with rsi and when we talk about rsi we're talking about rapid sequence intubation so let's take a look at the dose. The easy part is the dose can be one milligram per kilogram for both of them. Makes my life so much easier. One milligram per kilogram for sucks, one milligram per kilogram for rock. Another thing that you have to know, because this is a very classic type test question, very easy to answer if you understand the meds, the difference between uh, the depolarizing agent and the non-depolarizing agent. Let's take a look at them. I got a neuromuscular junction here. If I'm going to show you how a neuromuscular blocker works, we have to show you a neuromuscular junction. In the synaptic cleft, we have, we have an axon here. This is my axon terminal, as you can see. And down this axon terminal, I get acetylcholine. That's what these little guys are, by the way. These little things that are floating down this axon. And in this synaptic cleft, by the way, that is this area that is in between the actual muscle itself and the neuron, this acetylcholine drops down and finds itself a receptor site, which you see several of them down here. Again, these acetylcholine find itself a spot, and when it finds itself a spot in the receptor site, it causes an action. That's what acetylcholine does, right? For example, if I'm able to move right now, I got acetylcholine that's going into my muscle, and it's causing me to create an action. We call that action depolarization. Depolarization equals an action. And you have to know that because let's take a look back at our medications. We have a medication called sacetocholine. And sacetocholine is a neuromuscular blocker, but it is a depolarizing neuromuscular blocker. So let's take a look at what that does. This acetylcholine or sacetocholine drops down and it sits right inside of a of these little receptor sites and it starts to fire and it starts to depolarize just like acetylcholine would because of that it takes up the space that the acetylcholine would usually sit in and because it's taking up its space and it's depolarizing the acetylcholine can't go in there that's why your patient becomes paralyzed now the interesting part is that it is depolarizing so what does that look like on your patient we call it fasciculations your patient will be twitching when you give them succetacholine. Sux is a depolarizing neuromuscular blocker that causes fasciculations or muscle spasms and muscle twitching. Causes also bradycardia. It's known to even be dangerous for multi-system -tra multi trauma, potentially even increasing ICP. Can be a dangerous medication, but it is fast acting, it is short acting, and it is very good for RSI uh, when intubating or advancing an airway. Let's take a look now at the neuromuscular blocker rockeronium that is a non-depolarizing neuromuscular blocker. Rockeronium will come down these axons, right? Just like we just said, it will come down and it'll fit in that same receptor site that we had as the succetocholine was. It'll land right in that same receptor site but it blocks that receptor site. So when acetylcholine comes down, it just bounces off. It doesn't allow the acetylcholine to sit in those receptor sites, thus making the patient paralyzed. But remember, rocaronium is non-depolarizing. So your patient is completely flaccid and your patient does not move at all with rocaronium or vecaronium for that matter. Completely different how those medications work because one, again, depolarizes, the other one is non-depolarizing. Please remember that. With rapid sequence intubation, what should we be giving before we give those neuromuscular blockers? Please do not ever in your life give a neuromuscular blocker or something to paralyze somebody without giving other meds first. And the reason why I say that is because if I give somebody a paralyzing agent as a neuromuscular blocker, they're paralyzed, they can't move, but they can still think, they can still hear you, they can still feel pain, you are going to have a lawsuit on your hands, I promise you. Because of that, we give sedatives and or analgesics before you give a neuromuscular blocker. Can we use ketamine first? Absolutely. As long as we don't have any sort of contraindications for the ketamine, we can consider it. Now, the use of analgesics is like a sub is a subject that a lot of people are kind of like iffy about. They're like, man, why am I going to give like fentanyl 
for RSI. Remember, fentanyl, we know is an analgesic, but through synergy, analgesics mixed with sedatives knocks people out. Again, facilitating intubation, makes make sure that the patient is not only unresponsive, but comfortable, right? We're not worried about them waking up on us. It is very common to see fentanyl in people's RSI kits.